Thank you. Okay, welcome to our regular meeting of January 4th, 2022. Uh, this meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the open public meetings law. This meeting of January 4th, 2022, with instructions for internet access, was included in a meeting notice sent to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January 6th, 2021, and advertised in said newspapers on January 8th, 2021, and January 9th, 2021 respectively posted on the website and the bulletin board in the municipal building on January 9th, 2021, and has remained continuously posted as required under the statute. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is on file with the, uh, in the office of the municipal clerk. So uh, we'll start with a flag salute again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'm going to jump right to uh, the presentation because I know you, you know, you guys look great. I mean, we should probably make you <laughs> sit back there because you look so good, but I'm going to have you come up and make your uh, presentation uh, right away. So, can we get a picture of these guys? Yeah, that's where I was going yes. to. You can get home to your family. Floor's yours. Welcome. Uh, we get a picture of them. They yeah, look so we good. Need, we need pictures. What? I'm like, I have liberties. <laughs> Okay, I'll get another one. <laughs> I want mine. Depending on how your presentation goes, we'd like to get a picture of you with the committee. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. All let's right. see how good we'll, we'll, you do we'll, here. We'll, All right. We did that once before, and I got in trouble. But okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll work with that. All right. Uh, I recommend the committee on all your new assignments. Uh, I hope this committee leads us into a great 2022 year and does the best that you possibly can for the township and the residents. Um, I am Bill Challender. I want to set the record straight on one thing. I did not retire from the fire department. I retired as the president. I opted not to run for re-election. I am still involved in the fire department and I still run. Very good. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. I want to get that <laughs> straight. Um, Obviously, you know why we are here tonight to talk with the Township Committee. We have talked with your liaison committee uh, what, about uh, a month ago, and we've gone through some things with them, and hopefully they brought that back to the committee. Um, what we will do is I will let the Chief, Sean Bozarth, uh, explain what I believe you do have a packet of what we have gone through. Uh, I believe you also have the specs that we have worked with, um, and you should have the latest and greatest stuff that... I have one copy. I wasn't able to make multiples for everybody, but I can pass them out. While you're All right. Oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll uh, give it to them and they can pass it down. Yeah. Um, How much is it going to cost? This has been an ongoing process that we've worked on for uh, a little over two years now. Two and a half years. And... Um, we think that we have crossed all of our T's and dotted our I's to get the best vehicle for this township that we possibly can. Uh, Chief Bozor will explain to you the vehicle that we would like to have the township purchase. Um, he will explain to you what it can and can't do. And at the end, we don't have anybody, and we're going to. Say, well, I was going to say we will take questions from the township committee. Right, right back here. <laughs> Obviously, we don't have that to do. So, uh, anything that you want to ask us, please ask, because we'll do our best to answer everything that you want to know. Chief, how about it? Thank you. I'd like to congratulate everybody on their positions as well. Um, as Bill has explained, this has been a lengthy process. This is We've been at this for two and a half years. Um, a lot of it had to do with COVID shutdowns, uh, trying to get engineering teams 
to give us information on what trucks and what specifications that we could possibly have in this piece of apparatus. Um, what we are looking to do is we have an older pumper. Okay? The pumper is due for replacement. We have an older rescue. Rescues are not uh, judged by the NFPA standards because they're not a firefighting piece of apparatus. However, we sought this opportunity to take this pumper <coughs> and this rescue and combine them into one unit. The reason why this works out so well in our township is because of also uh, we have a lack of volunteerism right now. So when we have a, a low number of firefighters manning this apparatus, we need this apparatus to do more than just fight fire. Okay, so what we're looking to do is create a rescue pumper to replace our current pumper. What this is going to enable us to do is, as we are t called to a scene of a fire, um, alarm system, whatever it may be, and we get dispatched for a motor vehicle accident, we then have the capability to take that same piece of apparatus and respond to that call as well, instead of heading back to the station to grab another piece of apparatus. Does everyone understand the concept behind that? Okay. So we went through the option list multiple times with the vendor to, to find out exactly what we needed to make this work for this township. Uh, when we had time to go back and forth waiting for these engineers to get back to us because of the, the delays with COVID. Um, so we were able to iron this out perfectly to where this is the piece of apparatus that this township needs in order to replace these other two units. Um, Paula, did you pass around the, um, the spec sheet yet? Or? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The options sheet. The op yeah, there's yes. option sheets. Mm -hmm. um, so what you and have in front of you is you have the uh, HGAC um, Cooperative Purchase Program letter. Then that is from David Russell, the president of Pierce uh, Fire Apparatus. Um, also with that, there's some optional credits um, and additions uh, that if we do prepayments or however we want to look at this. Um, the one problem that we're facing right now is that materials are going through the roof. The cost of materials is outrageous. Um, probably not going to be able to lock this in, but uh, I was offered if we were able to turn this thing around quickly that that uh, Pierce is will gladly give us a, a uh, discount on the overall cost of this truck because their cost is going up and up and if they can't if we can't secure it in time we're just going to be adding to it with with the, the bill materials what was the discount Sean the discount uh, that was on I, I, I looked at it first but didn't <laughs> yeah. no problem okay so discount passed it down uh, Pierce is offering AGAC quoted price of 713 yes so $41,000 um, is that correct? Forty-nine thousand. Forty-nine thousand. Okay, there I see it. Yep, forty-nine thousand sixty-three dollars and seventy-nine cents. Um, <clears throat> that is by that date on the paper there, one twenty-eight of two thousand twenty-two. It's supposed to be. I see they got the date wrong. If if I could just interject at this point and just say because <clears throat> we we may possibly be exploring a national co-op purchasing process unequivocally there is absolutely no way we're going to be able to be able to take advantage of those discounts there's no way that through that process we'll have it locked in in time so i've already i just just so you know i spoke to okay. don about that today so we can basically wash that discount yeah. but no we can I don't want to get everyone's hopes up on that discount because it it's can't have procedurally to be procedurally and going through the national co-op and i'm sure mr gillespie will be able to yeah talk about it in terms of there's a lot we can't just say it's a national call we have to prove a lot of things that it's that say yes. yeah so if we go through a national call what's the advantage we don't have to go out to bid they do the bidding for us and we have to ensure that they're following new jersey state's uh local public contracts law procedures which we we know that they do because there are other townships that 
have right. gone through this the this uh, Houston Galveston uh, National Co-op, but we have to do our due diligence locally. Um, to Is that ensure. similar, like state contract? Then very it similar. Very the state contract, you don't have to go out to bid. They they it's a pre-bid on the on they that do the work modification. <laughs> right. Okay. So if the committee were to approve the request, where are we going to get the money? So that's another reason why this just we just can't. So you have to um, allocate the funding. You'll have to do that through probably a capital ordinance, uh, which will take two months. You know, in order for the funding to be allocated, uh, you can either bond for it, um, capital we're gonna overlay. We're going to have to bond for it. So at a minimum, it's going to take two months. Even with the, the discount, what's the price? Excuse me. Even with the discount, what's the price? With it? Even with with the discount or without? Without. With the discount, what's the price? Well, we have to the trade ins with the discount. Yeah, 664, 420. Yeah. Okay. So my next question, guys, is what happens to the two pieces of equipment that you have now? There are going to be trade ins. Is that on the proposal? Yes. Yeah. Well, one hundred and thirty thousand oh, dollars. Fine print of side. trade in trade in value. Make sure. Uh, we we have also. Let me explain something else. We've also taken other options. Um, we were contemplating taking the drivetrain out of our current truck, since the truck has similar low miles, but on a fire apparatus, it's rough miles. Uh, we were contemplating taking the drivetrain out and actually putting it into a glider <laughs> kit, which is just an empty chassis with a new VIN, so it, it would count as a new truck. The problem was is that the cost was even more than the new truck because you lost your trade-in. Once you remove that engine and transmission from that truck, that truck has no value. So this gotcha. is, so we are stuck with doing it this way. Myself, I wanted to get away from the current uh, emission systems, the DEF and DPF fluid um, that the diesel engines now require. Um, we were looking down that avenue, myself being a diesel technician, um, I really wanted to, to get us away from that, and it's, it's not going to be cost effective. So, Sean, um, with regard to the need of this fire truck, what, are the, what does the state say as far as the longevity of a fire unit is? In other words, why are we required to replace this? Well, it's actually the NFPA that yes. we're following, okay. and once an apparatus is of retirement age, it has no value. So we're approaching that retirement age where it still has a trade-in value. So your objective then is to, having this trade-in value, you want to use those two units, you want to sell those two units, acquire a certain amount of funds that can be applied against the purchase of a new uh, pumper Yes, it would, emergency it would be a trade-in value offered by as opposed to the other direction, which is you have no trade, -in. no trade in value, and you have only a new truck, but you pay the full cost of whatever that upgrade to that truck would be. Yeah. So, I, you know, kind of remembering how, what we went through to get the one big truck that was, when I first came on uh, the committee. It, it, can you explain uh, the? Uh, is there a relationship to the overall fire insurance rating of residential and commercial properties? Uh, is there a tie-in between the age of our fire equipment and those ratings? Yes, there is. Once it goes past the 15 years, which we just passed. So it is a potential for a, a re-rating or an increase in the, in the ISO. fire insurance uh, premiums for that is correct. our uh, residents and businesses? What is the name of that insurance? It's, a, it's an acronym, isn't it? Like ISO. ISO. Oh, ISO. Yeah. But isn't that just one factor of many that did, that influence the ISO rating? It is. It is a just yeah. It is just one factor. Right. There's a lot. There's, it, a there's more factors. like if we were to change um, our grids, water supply, um, size of pumps, stuff like that. Um, that's also why we had to to keep the same thing that we have. We had to keep a thousand gallons of water on board. We had to keep the two thousand gallon permitted pump. 
to satisfy these ISO ratings so we're not costing the residents or the commercial properties more money in insurance. And Sean, your your choice of getting this particular truck rather than you know a, a ladder truck, um, I, I'm, I know there's some thought that's gone into that. I, I just want to understand that thought process. Why won't we get a ladder truck? Why do we need one? Why don't we need one? Well, a ladder truck, there's no way that we could possibly put that much water or that size pump in a ladder truck without making it you know, too big for the township. Uh, turning, turning radius, stuff like that. So we have to kind of concentrate on what we're replacing now, okay, is, is the pumper. So we have to get that resolved first. Um, ladder trucks, let's talk about ladder trucks. Um, we have two ladder trucks responding into this town for every incident that's dispatched that as such a, a fire incident. We have West Hampton and we have Mount Laurel, both bringing a ladder from either direction. Um, so that's what uh, has us covered there. Do they do that every time there's a fire? Every time there's a reported smoke condition fire, such as a dwelling, commercial building, they are automatically dispatched with the RV task force, which consists of neighboring towns, the sending districts to Rancocas Valley High School, as well as Mount Laurel Township. Are these reciprocal agreements between the towns? Yes. So we do the same for our neighboring towns. So you, you'll see us come racing through here. We're either going to East Hampton, Mount Holly, Mount Laurel, West Hampton, Lumberton. And what do we provide to them? We provide manpower and pumpers. So we have a pumper and we have a tender. So we pro we're providing either the, the equipment for supplying water or providing manpower. The tender, or other piece of equipment, that is uh, that holds 2,500 gallons of water. And what that enables us to do is to provide a mass amount of water in an emergency. So if we're set up for a tender task force assignment, it's usually because it's in an area where there is no water supply. So there's no hydrants in that area. Um, a lot of times we do get called mutual aid uh, into Tabernacle, Shemong, uh, those areas out in that part of Burlington County because of the no hydrants and the need for an immediate water supply. Now, these things are done so the cost to all surrounding towns are lower because they don't have to buy a variety or basically duplicate the same types of equipment. Yes, because we basically share everything. So, standard way of doing things saves money. I understand. So, you feel confident uh, i hope that as long as the surrounding towns need our pumpers that we can count on them to supply us with ladder trucks i am so there's a real bonding yes. yes there in your opinion okay this is um this topic came up in uh sean and bill we, we just spoke of this a little while ago telling us this that the ladder trucks come to every call so we were uh, there's a possibility of having a three-story building within haynesport which we don't have now so ladder truck uh, was brought up in a question but ladder trucks come from other towns on every call so that will not affect based on the ch lack of change of response to our iso ratings um, to answer that question of that person before. And the other issue is is that now we have something to return in, in, in kind uh, for the use of the ladder trucks all the time. So yeah, we can uh, provide, and the response. fact that we're missing, and, and because of the lack of volunteers, uh, we need to have a more sophisticated pumper to do more things. And you had told me a story where um, it was scary because you it was during a drill, thank God, not a real life thing, where, whoops, didn't have this on this we got to go we have to make it happen go back and get something else so if everything is on this new um, machinery technology increases technology changes unfortunately volunteerism has dropped um it's crucial that we have this and to be able to share this with other towns so um absolutely yeah i you and i talked about this but i wanted to bring this and put this on the record and share with the rest of the committee can i ask a question this has nothing to do with the piece of equipment that you spent seven hundred and something thousand dollars to refurbish this is a different that's not being traded in no Th that one we still have and will still use 
What, what's what's there was one that was just refurbished a couple of oh, years no, ago. That, that, that's our that, that has that nothing our, to do with that, this. That will stay put. Um, that piece of apparatus um, is um, what gets called to these fires out in the other sections of the county because of the mass amount, the mass quantity of water which is on board. Uh, that truck is is staying put. And that still has a, a long yeah, useful still has life. life left. Yes. Okay. And and this piece of equipment is a smaller. It's a smaller truck. Truck. Yeah. And if we were to need a ladder truck, would it currently fit in our existing firehouse? Not right now because we have too many vehicles. <laughs> All right. So if we were to need one, we have space. If we got rid of what vehicles? If we got rid of a rescue and maybe got a rescue pumper. We might have room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Look at and, and, and if you do combine both of those uh, units into one, we'll have an extra bag, won't we? That is correct. So we won't really have to expand the firehouse. So it actually saves expense at the, you know, on the further back end. Absolutely. Okay. So how long uh, does it take to buy one of these? The manufacturing process would take, uh, I believe it was 19 months. Yeah. Right. Well, it's important that the people who get the contract are the same people taking the trade-ins, correct? Yes. Because if they are delays in the construction, it doesn't change the price to offer for the trade-in if it's their own fault. You know, once, right? once the once your contract's gone, done, yes. so if they take 25 months it's and they get the trade-in still worth what they said. That is That's correct. important. That is correct. Yeah. So good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but don't forget to add to that 19 months. If mm -hmm. you're not going on a state contract, you're not going through a co-op like Houston Galveston. You're, you're out on the street yourself. You got to bid it. Mm -hmm. It's not like we just say, okay, well let's buy that truck. We got to go out on the, on the street. Oh, true, it. true. But he, the specs, they'd have to bid to those specs. And mm -hmm. in and that you know, bid, you be careful with the specs because they can't be. Pro pro no, they could. But couldn't we, the person bidding it? We could put the specs that they had to give us to trade in price. Oh, I think that's one of your alternate bids. Is, that's is an alternate bid. No, it would have to be that we that wouldn't be good for us. We want whoever's building the truck to take the trade ins and have a fixed oh. price because if there's a delay in the truck manufacturing, then then the trade ins are worth less to people. Who, we've got to use these trucks until the new truck get here, gets here. I mean, we can look at that, but usually it's done as an alternate bid. Because right. that would be a problem because somebody offers us $140,000 for two trucks. Right. But somebody else is building the truck instead of 19 months, it ends up taking 25 months or whatever. And the guy's going to say, Well, I'm not giving you that money. Those trucks are a lot older now. So you got to have right. the penalty of being late falls on it's the huge. person yeah. who's given the trade in numbers. It is. But I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the trade in issue. Um, that's, I, I mean, quite frankly, that's where Pierce is going to make their money is that trade in. And I just want to make sure that the town isn't, you know, I mean, would you be opposed to me finding out what a current trade-in amount would be offered by another entity just to see if it's, because if they're not. saying, well, I'll give you 140 for it now, but if I figure out a way to get another trade-in offer, an estimate, and it's 250000 that's a significant difference. Oh, yeah. And that might be something that the governing body might will be willing to consider in terms of keeping it and then trading it in separately as well so it, well, is that going to delay it i mean because you, you were talking before about we go into a, a national contract losing this discount i mean it, does that delay it where we get caught up and we we no, lose a I discount mean, from that well we're not going to get the discount so we discount can't was different from the trade -in. okay That's yeah no i know i know the yeah. two different things we're not i'm, gonna get I'm looking if we do that it gets extended. so the discount so instead of paying 664 we're paying 713 right. math it's, in my head yeah. we're just not going to be able to okay. that timeline and, you know added to that I, I remember going through this with the last truck and i'm like well, wait a minute you know i've seen and we've all seen it you get some of the towns down south some of the more rural areas they have older fire trucks they they don't yeah. they seem to be newer on the east you know around here you know the, the east coast or whatever but uh there is, I'm, I'm sure that truck's in great shape, and I'm sure there's value to it, you know, in another, maybe another market. So, I mean, if you wouldn't mind, but, you know, again, I don't, I'm with Jerry. I don't want to see you guys without it, you know, if we can ha help it. Well, we would just retain them until the new truck is prepared. Yeah, but you, yeah. you got to get exactly. a deal hey, with the, the trading value retains. Get, 
and then turn around and, and resell around them and see on what you own. get for them. Yeah. Whether it's through gut deals or whether it's through an auctioneer that I mean, works they're just, with Southern. They're, they're just going to turn around and sell it to some right. fire department. Well, they're not sorry, right. Somebody they're going to do it. doesn't Alabama. rely on an ISO rating. Yeah, what, what they would do is they would turn around to another fire department which needs an apparatus for a short period of time. Which yeah. that lifespan for the NFPA, once it hits that, yeah. that span. We can't, so we they can't. say, say you need a truck for five years, so they'll buy just an older piece of apparatus at a discounted rate to get them through, to get them by. That's why sometimes you see these older pieces of apparatus floating around. Or they just have it for a spare, right? Would it, does uh, yes, if you if you do not have it as your frontline piece, there are different rules and obligations you can follow. With. Here in Haynesport, we don't have that uh, that luxury that this is our frontline piece. So. Mm, yeah. But I'm just concerned that, you know, you offer a trade-in and you're going to say, okay, what are you going to give us for this 20 months from now? You know, how solid is that number unless that person's actually building the truck? So they could say, well, they're incentivized to get you the truck because that trade-in is going to be older. The longer we take, the trade-in is going well, to be older. I'm just comparing apples to apples. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's a yeah. good thing to do. I'm Here's just, I'm just concerned now, about I'm curious what another company if we now. get a delay, how much is that going to affect I'm somebody who says, I'll give you this for a trade-in? Like, I'm not familiar with saying, I'm going to trade my car in a year and a half or two years from now. I think that we can explore that together. Yeah. You know, and maybe talk to people who have gone yeah. through this and have had this experience, you know. Because we need the time. truck until we yeah. get, yeah. Until yeah. We get yeah. something yeah. new. Yeah. That's just and it. Then, yeah. um, you like know, I can talk to, service. we can work on that together. I can talk to people on my side of the fence in terms of administrators and other entities. And maybe if you can talk to other fire companies and other chiefs and presidents. And, and on, on gov deals that does have a history, can you look look up past history sure. of gov deals and fire trucks that sold on gov deals? I could talk to a rep. You know, and say, you know, give us some histories on, uh, you know, the basic specs of the truck and what what they've sold for at this eight range. You don't think Carfax will have that? Yeah, yeah. Carfax. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So not the option. What's the, what we do we need to do here, uh, John? Do we need to? I think you know. I think it's to authorize a call to work with Sean and try and figure out because you know the, the, it's it's the trade in value. The discount I was just saying to Paul. I was looking at the bond law. The discount is sixty some thousand dollars. You know, you're going to bond it over ten years. It's Six thousand a year. It's not a big deal. But your trade in could be much more mm. worth considering. Right. So. I think they need to. So, will you guys take a picture of us? What is now? Do you think? Uh, <laughs> you think it went good? You think it went good or what? Huh? <laughs> 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 you want you want an answer first before the picture? Yeah. So, where are we? What are we? <laughs> we have to vote on this, or we just verbal? Just say let's. I don't make a motion that we have Paula and. Take, no, I yeah. don't think you need a motion. I mean, I think you've, you've given that direction. They're going to work on it. Okay. Direction. I'd say put it together and see what works the best. But yeah, I think and, we're. And, and obviously, you know the time constraints that it's yeah. going to take 19 months to build it and we don't want to lose the value of the trade-in and blah, blah, blah. So, all the time. I, so, I, so at this point, we know we're not getting the discount. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we just have to get know, the fund. We know what yeah, number we're looking at right now. So I think the formal 713, mechanism, right? Yes. Yeah. Plus. The formal mechanism will be the, the, the ordinance. to. Yeah, so, so next meeting, possibly. You should have waited to get dressed up next meeting when we do a divvy order. You might have to bring them out again. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no more pictures. Sounds good. We knew it was coming. There, I think there's a little bit of a misconception here. We're not here to ask you for a truck tonight. Mm -hmm. We're here to tell you what we have done and what we need to do. All right? It's impossible for you people to put something together and do this that they have here right now in a time frame that they're saying you can save X amount of dollars. The thing is, we had to come here and talk to you to tell you exactly where we stand and what you need to know so that we can get this process moving forward. Yeah. So, so Bill, I think the everybody on the committee, you know, knew kind of because we, you know, we feel like we're kind of close to you folks, so we knew, yeah, we knew what was going on, and I think you're getting a warm. Uh, hope you walk away with a real warm reception to Never the idea. Never right cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you have the order. Away Be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I guess my. All right, let's go. First one. Right, we get a picture. Yeah. Well, well. Before, before I have one more question. No, you're not allowed. Is there? Is there? Is there any way that we can go back to the manufacturer and ask them to extend that discount period because of the situation? No. No way. I, I can try. That's I, all we can I will, ask. I will try my best. Okay. 
That's great. Yeah, and maybe just have that that time frame they, for all of them. Yeah, sure. yeah. Right, and what they ask, you know. They would. Absolutely. $47,000. It's difficult. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I have your election statement. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I need you all to shift. Oh, we're shifting. Shift, 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 shift. Perfect. Squeeze in there, Ken. Let that go like COVID is not in existence and we like each other. Exactly. All right, very nice. Just right here. I always recommend. Who can refuse when they show up like this? <laughs> Look great. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, guys. Actually, can I get uh, Bill and Sean? Yeah, you guys go there. The two of you. You guys stand there. Look. Just these two. I think they should put their hats on. Nah. I'm just kidding. Get out of Thank you very much for what you do. Yeah, thank you. We've got to figure out what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the ideal situation is the person sells the truck. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's brother made the right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's nice. It will be. It will be. That's why I'm saying. Once they got, once they got, if, you, if you're locked into a training <laughs> price. No, they won't. If they're locked in their trading price, they'll, they'll, they'll hurry up. Right, exactly. No, they'll, put, they'll put that order in front of the next exactly. good job, guys. And, you know, they do it good. Oh, 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 gee, that happened, right? Yeah, it happened. I know that happens. Especially when I get a count. Somebody's okay, back to reality here. Uh, we have the uh, executive session minutes of December 14th, 2021 to uh, approve. Motion. Second. Second. Yes. Did did we do a roll call? I don't think we did. Well, no, we didn't. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do a roll call so we're official. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Levinson. Here. Mrs. Gilmore. Here. Mr. Claus. Here. Mr. Montgomery. Here. Right. I, I, Leela's got to like tone me down a little. I'm glad she's sitting next to me and settle me in this year. You know what I mean? So I'm glad, very thankful that you're next to me. I'm just glad my seat just calm me down a little. Yeah, I'm your right hand. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're gonna. You're, yeah, that's right. I hope you. I hope I, you uh, do everything you did for us. Uh, so uh, we have a um, motion and a. Yes. We vote on. Mr. Klaus. Yes. Mr. Montgomery. Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mrs. Gilmore? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. So we'll uh, group the uh, report section in tax collector, code enforcement, fire official, construction, and emergency services. <clears throat> I move we accept the reports. I second. Mrs. Gilmore? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Klaus? Yes. Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Next is a presentation from the Haynesport Fire Company for a purchase of a new truck. There's nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the end that of that. <laughs> All right. That one off. But anyway, we want to thank the fire department for everything they do. Uh, they're great people. So uh, 
We have one member of the public out there, uh, and you do not get a comment. Two. Uh, two? But yeah. Two, two, online? We have online. 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 My wife's in the in the audience. Would you like to make make a comment? Yeah, can we get Sarah a heater, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, get her a heater. Uh, do we have somebody online? Yes, we do. We actually have two residents online. Anna, did you want to go? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, Anna Evans, 63, Hi, Drive. I'm just curious, uh, because the mayor mentioned in the previous meeting the um, remedy, the builder's remedy lawsuits, that he had, he had a lunch with mayors and a bunch of the surrounding towns. We're talking about their the builder's remedy lawsuits and how we yeah, need to recognize the victim. And I'm just curious if I can have a little bit more details about which towns. I realize it's kind of maybe privileged, but like, I, just, I did a quick Google, I didn't find any information online about any of that. So I'm just interested with which towns like Holly, West Hampton, or if you can tell me Yep, yep. No, no problem. Uh, look up Moorstown and Mount Laurel. Moorstown, Mount Laurel. Okay. You'll see. You'll see what. Now, of course, uh, that was from the the mayors and ex mayors. Um, you mean currently? I thought you said currently. currently absolutely, you said currently. currently. Yes, yes. They're fresh. They're fresh. They're fresh. I, I actually, I think. I would have been surprised if I had all the idea because they literally have built so much of all the I think it's the one on Marn Highway. Marn Highway in by Hartford. I, I think, think that's the, the builder's remedy, remedy yep. suit. That uh, no, that's not it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the big one on Hartford Road in Marn. Maybe. Highway. Yeah. No. Particular addresses weren't mentioned, uh, um, Anna. It was just the fact that we were just doing a unit count of what they were getting in the, you know, was in it an impromptu breakfast with five or six people and you don't get that kind of attention out of at a crowd to mention every uh, project but numbers were being thrown around about so lawsuits and everything and it was pretty substantial stuff and i believe the the Martin highway project is is a result of a, a, a settlement settlement with correct the courts, correct right <laughs> that's that's the one yeah and instead of just getting 200 affordable they got 800 more residents correct. yep because of it yes <laughs> Yeah, it was a settlement yeah. of a bill. And then they got I think there's eight. I think there's eight hundred. Ridiculous! It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Because they one needed the twenty percent. They only needed twenty percent, but they got eighty percent more of residents because it was. And it was I think it's the cost them. of a Briggs Road. I think there's another one. Yes, and high and impact, uh, big time. A lot in Morristown. Big numbers, right. big numbers. Mm -hmm. But anyway, right. okay. Good point. Anybody else with a comment or a question? With that, I'll close public comment. We have uh, resolution 2022-32-1 establishing a 2022 temporary budget. Motion to approve 2022 Second Second motion. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Klaus? Yes. Mrs. Gilmore? Yes. Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Resolution 2022-33-1 authorizes a transfer of plenary retail distribution license from Hainesport Wine and Liquor Incorporated to Charlie's Wine and Liquor Incorporated. Motion to approve 2022-33-1. I, I have a question. Oh. Yeah, um, this means that it's non-consumption, right? It's just strictly retail? Is that, is that uh, this plenary, license is? Plenary, plenary has a meaning in Distribution is the plenary complete distribution but not consumption correct okay motion to approve vote please second mr levinson yes mrs gilmore yes mr klaus yes mr montgomery yes mayor mclaughlin yes so resolution 2022-34-1 authorizes a long-term financial agreement between the township of haynesport and btc <laughs> Three Hainesport Logistics Center Urban Renewal. So you authorized this at the last. I'm sorry, but you authorized this by ordinance. Now this is the resolution authorizing the agreement itself. I'll make a motion. I will second. Can I? Can we make a comment on this? Absolutely. I got to tell you, this is impressive. You guys, <laughs> I, 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 I am stunned at these numbers and the benefit this town is getting from this. And when you think about we're going to get that whole area cleaned up, 
from Phil Gold. And we're going to get this revenue coming in. I am I, I, I'm almost speechless. This is amazing. And, and I can't thank you both enough. This is this is excellent. Yeah, really. Yeah. Here, right here. here. Thank you. Such a such a such a win-win, right? And it's important. When I looked at this, I read this and how it was written up. I'm happy it's urban renewal because that's what it is. I mean, that was just a, a disaster there, and it was just such and a win-win. The whole area so is going to get improved. Like, Absolutely. We're going to eliminate a hazard of the way the road comes out. The dealership's going to be straightened out. There's the stupid jug handle's going to be changed, and there's going to make more of the ground usable. It, 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 this is. Yeah, I, this is what redevelopment is supposed this to be. Yes, this is exactly. a great redevelopment where we make out. This is this is a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of work had to be coordinated with a lot of people, and you guys did a great job. Yeah, yeah I just want to Five years, I think, since they... Yeah, this is fabulous. And I, and I just want to remind everybody that Paul and John did a lot of work getting more for those properties than we were originally going to get, and Henceport will benefit from those additional funds over and over again. Yes, uh, Paul. And Good job, Paul. The yep. gift that yep. keeps giving. He's giving yes. Paul the credit Thank and you. followed by all, yep. and, uh, all respects you deserve. I have to also thank our tax assessor um, mm -hmm. for, for giving us some insight. The other Paula. So no, tax no, 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 tax assessor. Oh, I'm sorry. He, he's part of this as well. So Great yeah. job. Okay. Yes. Great. So, thank you. Well, your team is awesome. Our team. Is so awesome. what happened for the record here um, is that our uh, our team in in here with our attorney were able to uh, understand market conditions. And basically renegotiated uh, the tax uh, payments from this uh, developer, and uh, it, it's a pretty significant uh, matter and uh, um, amount of money. And and the fact is that that property, just like the uh, warehouse over there by Lowe's, which is was empty for maybe a hundred years, that's going to generate twenty million dollars worth of taxes for the township. Over the next 30 years, like I said, it's been empty forever. Um, and now this site uh, would probably have sat for even longer because mm. of the uh, the uh, contamination. Uh, so this developer uh, has found a way to be able to uh, market, you know, the the, the property for rents or and uh, found the uh, finances to clean it up. So we're very lucky that. Uh, uh, we were able to take advantage of the market because it's not going to be there forever. And that site would have probably sat Untaxed. almost in perpetuity. Uh, we ended up it. And, and, it's, and once they clean that up, it's a great location for them. Mm -hmm. So eventually, yeah, yeah. once they do that, it'll, like I said, win, 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 win for so many ways. So yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yes. So here, here. We vote on it. Yeah. Mr. Klaus. Uh, yes. Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Absolutely yes. Mrs. Gilmore? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. So we have uh, one business license. Mm, I think there's two. Uh, we, let's see. Uh, we have Wallace Family Chiropractic and Jumbo DTG LLC. I'll make a motion. I second the motion. Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mrs. Gilmore? Yes. Mr. Klaus? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. So, again, uh, comments from the public? Anybody? I would like to say one more thing if I can. Sorry, I know for me, I'm just here again. Um, I am uh, I just wanted to say that I wanted to congratulate Leila on the absolute excellent term as the mayor. Thank you. Comments from the administrator. I just want to congratulate everyone um, for their respective appointments. I look forward to working another year with our amazing staff. Um, it is a privilege and an honor uh, to be in this position, and I do value it every single day. And I thank all of you for the opportunity. Um, I look forward to working with our capable professionals as well as all of you governing body members um, in 2022. Thank you, Paula. Thanks. We're happy thank to have you. Absolutely. Comments from our solicitor. Um, well, first of all, uh, thanks for dinner. <laughs> 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 Looks like you still have some left there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love cookies. Um, more importantly, uh, thank you uh, on my own behalf and on behalf of the firm for uh, giving us another chance to serve you this year. I don't, uh, I think Paula read my script. Um, I don't ever uh, underestimate what a privilege this is. Uh, I love this seat. I love sitting here. I love being part of, of what you all have achieved. Um, and uh, I look forward to working with you again this year, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Likewise, you, John. John. Thanks. Honored to have you. So I'll start on the uh, left hand side with Mr. Montgomery for comments from the get committee. To, get to go first. Congratulations again to uh, Jerry. Um, in another three year term, and uh, as deputy mayor, and to Mayor McLaughlin, um, returning as mayor, and our congratulations again and thank you for the service of Mayor Gilmore. Um, appreciate the work of Paula and John and Tara and all the other staff, and um, we had the fire in here as well. Um, the other things I wanted to point out is is that um, when the fire department was here, just that we have free radon tests for residents. Um, so we do have some left, I was told. Um, so please come in. You just need to give your address and some proof of residency, and you get the radon test. It's a good thing to do. I want to thank the chief and um, Chief Bozarth and the fire department for driving Santa Claus around. Um, I still remember that when my children were younger, there were some youngers in our development, and um, they just love it. Um, the other thing is the construction. I just looked at this. You know, 457 permits and um, permit updates, 457 over the past year. That's 1.25 a day for a value of over $15 million of improvement to our town, residential and commercial, and most of it's residential. So I've always said that Hansport is a small but mighty town, and uh, um, with all this urban renewal we're doing and the fine, fine work our people here are doing, I'm just so proud and honored to be a part of it. So uh, just uh, thank you. Jerry? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for your confidence in me. Um, I can't say enough about being reelected and then being appointed deputy mayor. It's quite an honor, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> I want to congratulate Bruce on being mayor, and uh, Leela for her last year. It was an excellent year, and uh, I hope she's here all the time because she's worked so hard as mayor. And I would love her to continue, you know, being here. So um, again, thank you all, and. Uh, we got a great town and we got great crew and we're doing good things and uh, it's it's easy to defend good stuff and I really do mean that and that's what we are we're just good stuff we're every, everything is great and uh, we'll just keep working harder at it so thank you you're here uh, I'm gonna give Leela the last word Bruce well it's it's hard to build on everything you guys already said um, it, it's just a privilege to be a part of what makes this town work uh, I, I have to say the residents are also privileged to live in this town um, because it's a great town and, and if you've been to other towns you, you do realize that I've, I've lived in other towns and uh, I've attended some of the meetings and, and the participation is it's, it's really not there um, but, but also the, the quality I think of the people who are, who are uh, honored with the votes. Um, I, I think we have such a commitment to this town an interest in this town and, and, and a desire to see that it be successful. And I think, I shouldn't say think, I know that, that Haynesport is a town not locked in place. It's on its way up. And there's nothing there's nothing more but, but bright skies for this town. And I wouldn't have known that as a resident, but being a part of this township committee, I know that now. Thank you, Bruce. Leela? Well, I too want to um, congratulate Jerry and Bruce, and to thank those that attended tonight's meeting. Um, I, I, I've worked with the people here in, in the building a great deal, and, and it's, it's amazing um, the effort that they put forth. And there's a few that I don't get to see because they come in in the middle of the night. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody that's been affiliated with the township has, has just given us everything they have to to give and i'm hoping that uh, this year we'll be able to accomplish some of those long-term goals um, that we've had in in the past um, 
there's a couple little items that I have to mention. The senior citizens are still meeting twice a month on the second and fourth Thursday at the Street Community Center. And storytelling uh, is starting up again. Uh, it's on the 21st at the Street Center from 10 a.m. to 11 for two and a half to five year olds. <clears throat> this year they are still looking for um, some volunteer readers. So if there's anyone out there that's willing to um, put in some volunteer work and reading to the children, to please contact Donna Casey here at Extension 121. The Recreation Commission is also doing um, the Heart to Give shoebox project on February 12th. This is where they collect the shoeboxes filled with personal supplies for the homeless residents in the area. They're again working with one of the churches in Mount Holly that serves um, the homeless. Drop-off will be at the Street Community Center, uh, that's 100 Broad Street, from 10 a.m. to noon on the 12th. The Recreation Commission goes out of their way to um, provide uh, things for the community, and um, they, they just they put their heart and soul in all the activities they try to plan for the children and the adults and, and the various age groups. Everything from working with the police and uh, the bicycle uh, rodeo and, and the, uh, to have the Hope One uh, bus come to help with those people that are struggling with addiction or loved ones that are. I mean, it, it, the various things that they, they do, um, I hope everybody appreciates the hard work they put into it. And yes, I believe um, we are a township that's moving forward. And um, I hope we continue to come into this, uh, the new era with new ideas, new programs, and new successes. So um, once again, thank you guys. You, you guys are the best. I've really enjoyed working uh, with you so closely this year. And uh, I'm in it for the long haul. Good. Good to know. Nice. Um, I, I do want to thank uh, Leela for uh, the great job she did as mayor. I uh, gained a lot of respect for you last year. Um, you're really involved in the in the in the township and in, in the building. Um, you brought a new dimension uh, to the office of mayor with your involvement. Um, I just hope you keep signing those checks because <laughs> uh, they're about a foot high when you get them. Um, and I think I once once I tried that and that was the end of end of that so but anyway no i don't mean to demean that um but i know you look over the bills and i know you're a smart business lady and uh i hope you continue uh you know to to represent uh jerry and i and the committee uh you know with the building and you have uh, free reign as far as i'm concerned to do all the things that you did and that i hope you'll continue to do so i really appreciate it and uh, I, appreciate I am looking forward to running with you uh this year and uh we'll uh we'll give it give it a go together I, sounds uh, like a plan okay and again i want to thank the committee and uh and all the people in the building and uh, john for his good steady hand uh in guiding us uh with the legalities the professionals uh that we uh reappointed this year we have a good team uh they know our town uh and uh i just uh Look forward to a 2022 working with everybody. So thank you. So uh, I guess we, had, we have some bills to pay. Yeah, you. Yep. I see them. Yep. So we need a motion to pay the bills. Motion to pay the bills. Second. Mr. Levinson. Yes. Mr. Montgomery. Yes. Mrs. Gilmore. Yes. Mr. Klaus. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Okay, we just need uh, no executive session tonight, correct? So we just need a motion. Motion to, to, adjourn. to adjourn. I second that motion to adjourn. All right. Mr. Klaus? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. <laughs>